Okay, so this is my flow, Microsoft flow that takes scheduled flight emails and posts them to my Outlook calendar. This is the email we'll be using. So when an email arrives in my inbox, I check that it has schedule posted in the subject. And I would also add alert at schedulefly right here.com because that's who sends these emails traditionally. But in order to test it, I left the from email blank so that I could send myself the emails. So it takes the email, which is an HTML file, and then it converts it to plain text, just a nice long string that I can work with. I pull the year out of the email by using some interesting functions. So this just refers to the email's body, the whole text here. And then I split it using the slash. So it's gonna create an array of all these objects. So this would be an object, everything leading up to that first slash, 19, because it's between two slashes would be another object. And we keep going, but I'm only concerned with the objects leading up to 2021 because I want the year in this variable. So splitting by slash will give me objects. This is the one I'm looking for, 2021. It includes the two new line characters and then fry three. So I take that and then I skip four. So the array of all the objects delim delimited by slashes I skip this first one, one, skip this one, two, skip this one, three, skip this one, four. Now I have an array where 2021, new line, new line, Friday three is my first object. So I take first, and then I use substring to pull out just these first four characters. Start from zero, pull four characters. That gives me, this is a successful run. That would give me 2021 string year. So now that I have year, all these parallel branches down here, these are just each day of the week. We're just gonna go through one. Friday. So this is a variable called Friday. It's an array. It takes the entire body of the email and then splits it in half because the delimiter is fry, the actual string, capital F R I. That gives us an array of two objects, one from High Arthur up to Friday, excluding Fry. And then the second object is everything after Fry. Splitting discludes the uh, delimiter. So now I have an array of two objects. I take the last one. So that's 319 to the rest of the email. I split it by a dash. So there's a bunch of dashes, so this array is going to have a bunch of objects, but I'm only concerned with this one. So I take first, and now I have this as a string. I'm going to split it again by the spaces, giving me an array of one, two, three, four objects. The date, start work time, the word two, end work time. That's what's in the array. A successful run that has an actual date for Friday, you end up with this array stored in Friday, four objects. So condition, if that variable contain, contains the word two, which it showed if everything went right, we'll create an event. So this is calendar ID. This is just one of my calendars. I've got multiple. I have one called work. The title of the event, just work, IT assistant. And then here's where it gets pretty complicated. So start time. The start time and end time needs this specific format here. Example, so year dash day dash, no, sorry. Year dash month dash day, capital letter T, hours in military time, minutes and seconds. And that would be a string. So concat combines multiple strings into one long string. So we have year already. I'm going to pull that with this function variables year. I'll add a dash in. And then 
these three lines are for the day. This if statement, the condition basically takes the first object of the array, which would be three slash 19, splits it by the dash. So now I have the day and the month in an array. The month is first, the day is second. After I split it, I took the first one, so I have the day, and then I check the length. I check that it's less than two. This means that we have a day that's a single digit as opposed to two digits. Because the format, if the day is one digit, wants a zero, and then the day. So this first statement executes if that condition was true, if the day is only one digit or just less than two digits. It adds a zero in front of the first object of the Friday array split in half. The first object of that array split it, no wait. Yeah, just the first object of the array split it in half, pull the first half. So that would be the day, adds a zero. If this condition up here saw that the day was two digits, all it did was pull the day, because then it would be um, it would be two digits if it was higher than nine. And I'm saying day, but this is actually the month number here. I did get those confused, but the operations are the same. We had a dash because there's a dash required between the day and the month, or the month and the day. So here's the day, the previous function worked on the month. It's the exact same function, except when we split that first object, instead of pulling the first, which would be the month, we pull the last, which would be the day. So in our case, it would be 19. And then the same condition applies. If it's one digit, we want to add a zero in front. If it's two, we just leave it as it is. We add in a capital T. And then we start working on the time. So essentially, these functions are the same as the time before. You know, we're pulling, we take the array, we're pulling out, oh no, sorry, we're taking the array and then we have to use the skip function. All this does is remove ob objects from the front of the array. So we did variables Friday, this whole thing, we skip one, that gets rid of the, the date, and then we pull the first, which is the time. It would be three colon zero zero PM. So we can pull out the hour or the minutes by splitting by the colon and then doing first or last. Um, for the hour check, we do the same check, checking with one digit, adding a zero in front if it is. But considering it has to be military time, there's a big if statement encompassing the whole hour thing. And all this does is check if the time had p.m. or a.m. If it had a.m., it just checks if it's one digit and then pulls it as a zero or does the two digit pulls it. If it's p.m., it does the same thing except it adds 12 to the first or 12 to the hours, you know, because that's how military time works. Um, the minutes is always going to be two digits, so we just have to pull that out. I'll show this one in detail because it's easy to visualize. So variables, Friday, that would be the date, start time, to end time. Skip the first, or skip just one object, giving us the start time. Split it by the colon, giving us 3 and 0, 0 p.m. We take the last of that array, which would just be the 0, 0 p.m., and then we pull substring. We start pulling characters from the beginning of the array, zero, and we pull two characters, which would be just be the minutes excluding the PM. The if statement checking if hours is, if it needs 12 added to it or not, it does a similar action, except instead of checking that string from the first position, zero, it starts it at two, which is the PM. And then it just adds on the seconds. We start at zero seconds. And the end time does the same thing, except instead of skipping one in the Friday array, which includes this, it would just skip three. 
leaving us with the end time. And then we would split it apart and operate on it as we wish. Time is on the central time. And then on a successful run, so you had your Friday array. This would be true. This condition was checking if Friday array contains the word two. We have the event, it's my calendar, it's the title. And then those operations we did earlier should have ended with this. We got the year, the month, the day, and the time in military time. So start time, 1500, 3 p.m. to the same day, but the end time also with the 12 added to it. So 7 p.m., which is 1900. Here's just the data of the output. But yeah, so then you do all of that in parallel with each other day. So Friday, we split by capital FRI. Monday, we would just split by capital MON. And because each date and time starts with the weekday and ends with a dash, it allows us to pull out whichever date and time we want. We can't do one long string and then just start at some random position because everyone's names would change. So if I had a different name, then it would have messed it up. But this way, by splitting it by fry and dash, we can isolate the date even if this first line changes if the number of characters change. And that is all.